confession is good for the soul. Miss Angie, <laughs> Miss Angie told me to scoop the soap off of the counter into the bowl, and that's what I did. And I presented the soap, and the entire time at the exam, I was marking it. I was saying in my mind, "Good Jesus, don't make you taste the soap, don't make you taste the soap." But thankfully, she didn't. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Trudy here from All Things Trudy, and today I'm going to be doing part one of a three-part series that's all about food nutrition and health SBA. Now the reason why I decided to do this is because I was browsing through YouTube and I realized that there's no actual video explaining the food nutrition and health SBA process. So I decided that I'm going to have a go at it because I would want my students to have something that they can make reference to if they are preparing for their SBAs. And especially in this time with the pandemic I would want them to have all the information they need so if you want to learn all about my tips and tricks that I use when I'm marking food nutrition and health SPAs you can stay tuned and watch the rest of the video and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my youtube channel so tip number one is pretty simple review the mark sheet now the reason why I say this is because the mark sheet gives you a clear understanding of what is expected of you as well as it has the marks that are allocated for each criteria. Now for food nutrition and health, the mark sheet for the SBA is pretty easy to source. You can find it online by typing in food nutrition and health SBA mark sheet or usually the mark sheet is attached to the SBA question if your teacher provides you with the samples then that is fine also. Now, using the mark sheet before going into the exam will give you a better idea of how well you need to perform for the exam. Sure, you have it in your mind that you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're going to ensure that you do these certain steps, but reviewing the mark sheet solidifies the idea in your head. So that is why I say that it is important that you use the mark sheet or you review the mark sheet rather before going into the exam. Okay, so tip number two is pre-preparation. I cannot stress the importance of pre-preparation enough. Oftentimes when I'm marking SBAs, I realize that students tend to waste valuable time on simple tasks like um, peeling vegetables or chopping or dicing vegetables. All of these are things that can be done at home. The examiner is not going to mark you down for completing simple tasks like those. What they are looking for during the examination is your skill and your technique. So for example, they're looking for how well you utilize kitchen tools and equipment, how well you use the different cooking methods. Those are the things that they are marking you for. So simple tasks like probably weighing or measuring out your ingredients, if you can do that at home, then I would advise you to. Tip number three, expect the unexpected. Now, whenever you're in a practical exam, um, anxiety get the best of us sometimes. Sometimes we are over prepared. Sometimes we are anxious. Sometimes time is against us. And things that we did not plan for or things that we did not intend to happen, sometimes that does happen. So, expect the unexpected. Me and be prepared for anything. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, but you need to know how to fix it, how to put your mind in such a way that whatever happens, you'll be able to cope with it. Now, quick story time. When I was in grade 11, and I was doing my practical SBA for home management, I had a little dilemma, if you might call it that. Now, the task at the time was for me to prepare a period soup for a convalescent. No, time was against me and the examiner was, you know, rushing us to get the finished product on the table. No, I had prepared the soup and everything. It was just for me to put it in the blender, puree it, and serve it. But my soup was too hot, so I didn't have time to cool it down. So I put it in the blender just as it was, and I pressed puree. All of my soup went spilling on the counter mind you i only had about five to ten minutes left and my soup 
was on the counter. So, anybody who knows me, I did what I could do best. I started crying. But the lab tech at the time, Miss Angie, God bless her soul, Miss Angie looked at me and she was like, Stop the crying, we're going to fix this. And I was telling her that we don't have enough time to do it because, you know, the examiner is ready. And confession is good for the soul. Miss Angie, <laughs> Miss Angie told me to scoop the soap off of the counter into the bowl, and that's what I did. And I presented the soup and the entire time that the examiner was marking it, I was saying in my mind, do Jesus, don't make sure taste the soup, don't make sure taste the soup. But thankfully, she didn't and I got a one for home management, so a pat on the shoulder for me. So let my little story be a lesson to you. Sometimes in the exam, some things might happen and you might be saying to yourself, there's no way out of this or there's no coming back for this. It is possible i've marked sbas before where students are baking cakes and normally when they do the practice practical their cake bakes in 32 minutes or less and when they're in the exam 40 minutes past the cake is still baking 50 minutes past the cake is still baking but what are you going to do so you have to prepare yourself for whatever it is that is to come So, tip number four, presentation is key. I cannot stress this enough. Whenever you're doing a food, practical, as a matter of fact, whenever you're doing anything that says food, you need to present it in such a manner that it looks appealing to the eyes. Remember, we eat with our eyes first. Sure, you smell it and it smells nice. And when you were making it, it tasted good. But when you're presenting it, it needs to look attractive so you need to find means and ways in which that you're going to make your dishes look attractive and appealing to your examiner so you can use garnishes as a matter of fact on the mark sheet there is a points allotted for garnishing and decoration and I must say this also that you are not expected to go into the exam and make your garnishes and decoration those should be made from home as I was saying earlier about time and time management, any little thing that you can do at home, ensure that you do it. So make your garnishes and decorations at home. Another way that you can spice up your presentation also is to use centerpieces. I ensure that centerpieces is a must for my students. They enhance the beauty of the table and they bring out the beauty of the dishes that you have. Also. Instead of having the dishes flat on the table, you can use mount. And if your school does not have the proper, you know, tools for you to do so, you can improvise. You can put mixing bowls underneath the, the tablecloth and then you rest your dish on top so your dish will have an elevated feel to it. So please, in your exam, ensure that you do the utmost best to ensure that your presentation is perfect. And tip number five, the last tip, is to ensure that you review your time plan. Now, the time plan in your exam is your best friend. Remember, you are the one that wrote it, you are the one that found the recipes, you are the one that knows the method. The time plan is your best friend. Now remember on the time plan it outlines everything that you're going to do, it outlines every ingredient that you're going to use, it outlines the time at which you're going to do each step and how you are going to do it. You need to ensure that you follow your time plan in your exam. Remember the examiner is going to be using your time plan to assess you as well. So if possible, even though you are the one that wrote your time plan, which you should be the one that wrote your time plan just saying so even though you wrote the time plan ensure that you reread it reread it three or four times so that you understand exactly what it is that you're going to do and you remember what it is that you're going to do and when you do this you will spend less time in the exam flipping through the pages or flipping through the recipe it's just as important as all the other tips that I've given you before so please reread your time plan 
if you made it to the end of this video i want to say a special thank you for watching now this was just part one of a part three series if you would like to see part two and part three please leave a comment below leave a like subscribe 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 and please share this video with any student who is doing a food nutrition and health sba or anyone who is planning on selecting food nutrition and health in the future thank you guys so much and please subscribe 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 and i will see you in the next video